All right, our first speaker of Act Two is a community builder who is passionate about creating more beautiful, playful, enjoyable, and inclusive neighborhoods. She's also a mom, a sales leader at an AI scale-up, and an avid hiker. Please welcome to the stage, Heather Chapel. Hello. Uh, just to say, if you haven't been to the Ampersand building to check out the balloon installation where the party is going to take place tomorrow, you should go and do that because it's pretty awesome. This is my first pichakcha. So <clears throat> when you Im imagine a living city, maybe you think about green rooftops. This is, this is an image from uh, the Living Cities Canada program. Maybe you think about livability by metrics, maybe you're an economist, uh, and you think about it in terms of the Global Livability Index, where Calgary secured a top 10 ranking this year. Uh, cities are permanent human settlements. This demands that we design with people at the center, as Jan Gell argues in Pe uh, Cities for People. So this might sound familiar to a lot of you, but it's unfortunately something that we're, we're still learning. We, we still really kind of suck at doing this uh, from an urban planning lens. So why do I care about this? Uh, I recently moved to a neighborhood that has a really high population of seniors. Uh, on this road that I'll be talking about today, there's approximately 500 seniors that live in care homes on this one stretch of road. What sets this street apart is, you can sort of see in this picture here, but uh, it has no sidewalks and there is no crosswalks to cross the road. Uh, this street's in an older neighborhood. The south side of the road where the care homes are is owned by Alberta Health Services. They're building another new continuing care facility on this side of the road. And the north side of the road connects to the residential homes uh, made by Marcus, basically all the amenities of the neighborhood that make it a great neighborhood. For vulnerable seniors that are relying on mobility devices, wheelchairs, power scooters, all those kinds of things, accessing the amenities on the other side of the road is impossible. Uh, it's basically you're, you're, locked, you're locked there um, and you, you're isolated from all these essential amenities. So there's guidelines on age-friendly cities and streets. The WHO talks a lot about you know, visible crosswalks, uh, accessible curb ramps, raised sidewalks, curb extensions. Um, these kinds of things make cities more age-friendly. So uh, if we know what we're supposed to be doing and why do we care? Well, we should care because uh, this city is aging quickly. Uh, by, by 2036, one in five Calgarians will be defined as a senior. Ensuring their mobility and community involvement requires inclusive design choices that we make today. We've, we can't make these decisions into the future, right? It's, it's happening soon. So in response to this, our community of seniors sparked a community project called Friends of Centre Avenue. Our vision is to create the most age-friendly green street in Calgary. And we want to do this by creating a road that shapes a more inclusive future. So where do you start? Well, starting a community project starts with communication. So we talked to the neighbors, we talked to residents of the long-term care homes, we looked at survey data. Wow, this resident neighborhood area has been over-surveyed. And everybody says, no sidewalks, sucks. No crosswalks, sucks. We're trapped in the long-term care home and we can't get out. So we started dreaming up designs. Uh, we envisioned grand things. We envisioned closing down portions of the road. We envisioned community gardens built along the sides of the street. We envisioned a sidewalk. Uh, we wanted to offer spaces for people to rest, to maybe meet some of their neighbors, to hang out. Uh, big vision, wow, okay, we need, we need action. As Alice spoke about earlier tonight, we needed some collaborators and we were super fortunate that Activate YYC exists. Uh, that's a Federation of Calgary Communities granting program. They gave us some money and this money was helping us uh, start this initiative to try and reclaim the street for our seniors. So we had the dream, we had the design, we had the support, we had some funding, now it is on to the permits. <clears throat> what an opportunity to learn, wow. Uh, so yeah, things like road widths, um, traffic management plans, how far from a crosswalk can you paint a dot? Yeah, uh, anyway, lots of stuff. The plan scaled back, but we kept going. 
On painting and activation day, we transformed a street with some of these curbs that you can see here. We painted them vibrant, we painted them colorful. Now, one win is we do have a safer crossing point from an area that the cars used to just basically uh, park right in front of the only uh, exit point from this care home. We also established a new park space in a parking lot. It's called a caboodle designed by Northern Lands Studio. This caboodle provides uh, seniors and neighbors with a spot to meet, to gather. Uh, we, had a, we had a music fair there one day. And you know, above all, I think it really fostered this dialogue with the community about this street. And, and it really showed these people in these care homes that, hey, we care about you. We see you. Um, as one woman who's pictured here in her motorized wheelchair exclaimed, I've never crossed here without fear. Like literally, she was wheeling up and down this street when we had it closed. She couldn't believe that she could just easily cross up and down this street. So what's next? Well, we got a pilot, we got some data, we've got show, we, we've talked to people, we know how these changes are improving the lives that, of the people that live there and making them feel part of the neighborhood. Uh, but we're really far from achieving this amazing looking street. Good news, uh, luck would have it, the road in question is scheduled to be torn up in spring of 2024 in line with this new continuing care facility. They gotta rip out most of the road to put in utilities. Uh, this will include uh, the, ripping out the majority of the road to, uh, as the plan currently stands, widen it. So <clears throat> we're busy, we're busy advocating. We're advocating for people like Barb and her sister who sh she can't be wheeled the two blocks to this ice cream shop that she loves. She has to contend with whatever flavor her sister picks that day. Um, so we're advocating to say, hey, there are design principles that we know are out there. Let's just apply them. It's a lot of work. Wow, I'm a volunteer. I got a lot of other stuff going on. I'm tired. Uh, you know, the work, the coordination, the committees, there's a lack of guidelines, but we are persisting. We are persisting because we believe in the project. And a living city is really about a group of community members coming together and saying, there's a change we want to make, and we're going to make it together. So you can contribute too. If this vision resonates with you, reach out to your counselor and endorse age-friendly cities and comprehensive design standards. Advocate for a transformed center avenue, make it accessible for all. They're called NACTO guidelines, they exist. Let's just apply them. Thank you, Heather.